Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing well. So today we are going to do topic 16 of paper 2. Paper 2 topic 16 that is we will discuss here modes of reproduction. So we will divide as it is a little bit bigger. So we will divide in two subtopics that is 16a and 16b and today we are going to do 16a that is modes of reproduction. And in the next session, we will do 16B of remaining uh, lectures of this session, remaining topics of this session. So, the first topic of this session is we are going to discuss genetic consequences of self pollination and cross pollination. Genetic consequences of self pollination and and cross pollination so first of all we will do genetic consequences of self pollination so we all know that self pollination leads to very rapid increase in homozygosity very rapid increase in homozygosity that is self self pollinated species are highly homozygous highly homozygous so and as they are highly homo homozygous these species don't show in breeding depressions they don't show in breeding in breeding depression But may exhibit, but may exhibit considerable heterosis. So they don't show any inbreeding depressions, but they may exhibit considerable heterosis. Now, secondly, is cross pollination. So the cross pollination uh, species preserves and promotes heterozygosity. It preserves and promotes heterozygosity, hetero or homo, heterozygosity. Hence, the population of cross a cross pollinated species is highly heterozygous, and they show mild to severe inbreeding deformation. They show mild to severe inbreeding depression id this is inbreeding depression id and of and also considerable amount of heterosis and also they will show considerable amount of heterosis so this was this was the genetic consequences of self pollinated and cross pollinated species moving on now we will discuss Relevance of mode of reproduction in plant breeding. So, I hope you understand this genetic consequences. Now, moving on, what is the relevance of mode of reproduction? mode of reproduction in plant breeding pbh plant breeding so we will discuss some points here so the first one is genetic consequent genetic constituent genetic constituent so we all know that natural populations of cross pollinated species are highly heterogeneous Natural populations of cross pollinated species are highly heterozygous, hetero, heterozygous, and generally so loss in vigor on inbreeding, and generally so loss in vigor 
ड्यू टू और ड्यू टू इन ब्रीडिंग वेर इज द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ सेल्फ पोलिनेटेड स्पेसिस कॉन्सिस्ट ऑफ होम हो जाएगा सी इंडिविजुअल दे कॉन्सिस्ट ऑफ होमो जाएगा इंडिविजुअल एंड नॉट सो इनब्रीडिंग डिप्रेशन एंड डू नॉट सो इनब्रीडिंग डिप्रेशन एज वी डिस्कस जस्ट एलियर ए सेक्सुअली रिप्रोड्यूसिंग क्रॉप आर सिमिलर टू क्रॉस पोलिनेट्स ए सेक्सुअली रिप्रोड्यूसिंग क्रॉप आर सिमिलर टू क्रॉस पोलिनेटेड स्पीसीज इन देर जेनेटिक कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बिकॉज ऑफ इफेक्ट ऑफ इनब्रीडिंग They are similar to cross pollinator in their genetic constitution because of inbreeding. This inbreeding. So this was about genetic constitution. So in plant breeding, this heterozygosity inbreeding and homozygosity and not so inbreeding are kept in mind. So this is very much relevant in breeding. We should know. about this about in breeding about heterozygous is the plant homozygous or heterozygous so it is important so moving on second point nature of gene action nature of gene action so here self pollinated species are generally annual or short lived and evolved from cross pollinated species self pollinated are generally annual or short lived the short life cycle and generally evolved from cross pollinated species and they have evolved from cross pollinated species often found at extremer of a species distribution cross pollinated species often cross pollinated species often found at extremer of species distribution extremer in extreme climates in extremes and particularly in in extremes we always see stress environment so they are particularly found in stress environment the fitness for which is achieved by inbreeding and we achieve fitness here by inbreeding it is yours it ensures faithful propagation of best adopted gene combinations hence it ensures what in breeding do it ensures the best gene combination best gene combination so that it can survive in this stress environments in cross uh, let me rub some make make some let me make some space here this is the point of this only natural natural connection in cross pollinated species in cross pollinated species there is continual over interconversion of free variability there is continual interconversion of free variability free variability and in in self pollinated species bulk of the variety is frozen as homozygote potential variety and in self pollination bulk of this variability bulk of variability is frozen as homozygotic potential variety as homozygotic potential variability so this was about nature of gene actions what kind of genes there are present what kind of gene combination are there to be in different species now moving on to the third point that is facility in cultured pollination i hope you understand these two points now the third point is facility in controlled pollination so breeding methods invariably depend upon some system of controlled mating as we know that breeding methods in breeding we do some type some kind of controlled mating 
controlled mating the ease or difficulty in making crosses depend upon floral structure and the ease or difficulty in making crosses difficulty in making crosses is dependent on floral structure of mode of pollination suppose the flower is closed this is the flower it is closed flower here are its stigma stamen anther anything oh. so what happens here as it is closed it will be difficult here to do cross pollination so the floral structure is also very much uh, decides what kind of uh, pollination will be there and what kind of breeding we can do so here we see it is controlled pollination now for stability of varieties after release instability of varieties after release in cell pollinated varieties are homozygous and naturally cross in cell pollinated varieties are and you know cell pollinated varieties are naturally homozygous and natural cross pollination is negligible and here natural cross pollination is negligible not present in cell pollinated therefore they remain fairly stable hence they remain fairly stable but in cross pollinated as we all know there is species in cross pollinated species sufficient precaution has to be taken here sufficient precaution we need to take some precautionary steps precaution to avoid contamination to avoid contamination because what happens when you will not uh, be precautionary we will not taking precautions then there will be not natural cross pollination can be happening there and which is contamination so in case of hybrid varieties farmer have to replace it every year in hybrid varieties farmers have to replace seed every year due to severe in breeding depression in subsequent generations so what we see during our breeding time when we are breeding we need to also see that the our variety is stable because farmers will often not tend to replace their seeds every year it will be costly for them so we need to take precaution we need to avoid contamination in cross pollinator and cell pollinations are generally stable so there is less precaution required so i hope you all understand this moving on to the next topic of this session that is cross pollinated species so more in breeding depression than self pollinated species i cross pollinated cross pollinated species so more in breeding depression than self pollinated species why this was one of the previous year questions asked so we should know this as we know that cross pollinated species are highly heterozygous and carry large number of cross pollinated species are highly heterozygous so they carry a large number of lethal large lethal sub viable and other unfavorable recessive genes another unfavorable recessive genes the sum total of effects of these unfavorable alleles constitutes genetic load of a species so the sum total of these unfavorable recessive genes constitute genetic load of a species <coughs> the harmful effect of recessive alleles are marked by the dominant allele the harmful effect of harmfulness of recessive alleles are marked by their dominant allele as a result of which they are retained in population so the harmfulness of recessive alleles are often dependent or marked by their dominant allele the population therefore develops a genetic organization which favors heterozygosity and a result homozygosity 
दिस हियर व्हाट अपेंड द पॉपुलेशन हैंड्स फेवर्स जेनेटिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन व्हिच फेवर्स हेटरोजाइगोसिटी एंड एज ए रिजल्ट होमोजाइगोसिटी लीड्स टू डिट्रिमेंटल इफेक्ट्स लीड्स टू what happens when when the population is favoring an genetic organization with heterozygosity so their homozygosity cannot be possible because the population is favoring him heterozygosity so their 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 homozygosity leads to detrimental effects in contrast in cell pollination species are naturally homozygous in cell pollination species are naturally homozygous they don't need to become homozygous like here but in cell pollination they are naturally homozygous so that unfavorable recessive genes becomes homozygous and eliminated from the population so what happens so here unfavorable recessive genes are eliminated from the population eliminated but here as they are not eliminated that's why the population favors heterozygosity in those species this gene combination would be favorable which show no injurious effect in homozygous state so in these species the gene combination or gene organization which is favorable is homozygous as these unfavorable recessive alleles are eliminated moving to the next point hope you are understanding this so in cross pollinated in cross pollinated species the gene combination that would be deleterious in homozygous state there will be gene combination that will be deleterious in homozygous we just discussed earlier are not selected against are maintained in the population hence these homozygous are not selected and not maintained in the population consequently such species so in breeding depression as they are they develop more heterozygosity due to due to the unfavorable recessive alleles so they so they so high number of inbreeding depression so the degree of inbreeding depression in these species is determined by the degree of self fertilization so here inbreeding depression is determined by degree of self fertilization occurring in natural population of species occurring in natural population of this species so as they favor heterozygosity a little number of homozygous is deleterious which leads to inbreeding depression so degree of self pollination in these crops lead to inbreeding depression hence in the inbreeding depression is determined by degree of self more the self pollination more is the inbreeding depression in cross pollinated species so cross fertilized maize so for example you can see cross fertilized maize so up to 10% of self pollination as cross cross fertilized maize so 10% of self pollination the inbreeding depression is moderate here but in crop showing more cell pollination suppose 50% of soil pollination in some cross pollinated species then the inbreeding depression would be very high while alpha alpha while alpha alpha so is little inbreeding little inbreeding hence will results in very severe inbreeding depression so i hope you all understand what i was trying to say that the, the inbreeding depression is generally maintained by the cell fertilization in cross pollinated species so i hope you all understand today's session so that is all for today for any queries do comment if you like it please press the like button do share and subscribe keep making notes keep helping value adding to your notes as i say in every lecture the notes are going to make your brahmastra every question will be directly from your notes from the topics i am teaching so keep value adding to it that's all for today have a nice day thank you